When you think of table tennis, one country inevitably comes to mind. China. Since table tennis made its Olympic debut in 1988, China has dominated the sport, winning an impressive 32 out of 37 gold medals, along with 20 silver medals and 8 bronze medals. Olympic champions, People's Republic of China. China. People's Republic of China. In 2009, due to China's dominance in table tennis, the ITTF proposed reducing Olympic Games single entries from 3 to 2 players per country to prevent China from sweeping the podium. Today in China, table tennis is a national pastime. Elderly people can be seen playing in parks, and children often play it in schools. This video will explore why table tennis is so important to China and the reasons behind its long-term dominance in the sport. Table tennis originated in England. In the late 19th century, tennis was popular in Europe. But due to the weather and space limitations, some British college students brought the game indoors. They used tiny tables as playing surfaces, books as nets, and parchment as paddles, playing back and forth. From 1926 to early 1950s, table tennis was dominated by Europeans. However, during this period, the sport began to spread to Asia, where smaller yet agile Asian players started to demonstrate their competitive advantages. If there's one person who symbolizes the beginning of China's dominance in table tennis, it is Zhong Guotuan. In 1959, at the 25th World Championships in Dortmund, Zhong Guotuan made history. He defeated Hungarian veteran Joseph Sabo, clinching China's first ever world title in table tennis. This victory was not just personal, it marked the first world championship for the newly established People's Republic of China. When Rong returned home, he was treated like a national hero. Back then, China was struggling with poverty and honor development. Rong's triumph on the international stage was a beacon of hope for the Chinese people. The concept of a sports powerhouse also started gaining traction domestically. In 1971, at the 31st World Table Tennis Championships in Nagoya, Japan, a chance encounter sparked a historic shift in U.S.-China relations. One afternoon, as the Chinese team bus was about to depart, a blonde-haired, blue-eyed American athlete unexpectedly boarded, creating an awkward moment. His name was Glenn Cowen. Seeing his embarrassment, Chinese athlete Zhuang Zedong approached him kindly and gave him a piece of silk cloth with China's Huangshan Mountains on it as a gift. The next day, Cowen, a self-described hippie, reciprocated Zhuang with a t-shirt bearing a peace sign and the Beatles' iconic Lady B. In the tense political climate of the time, the friendly interaction between Cowen and Zhuang were captured by the media, creating an international sensation. Seizing the opportunity to break the ice with the US, China extended an invitation to the American ping pong team to visit. On April 10, 1971, after more than 20 years of Cold War, Americans finally arrived in China. The U.S. athlete played friendship matches and visited the Great Wall and the Summer Palace. The visit of the American table tennis team concluded on April 14 with a meeting with Premier Zhou Enlai at the Great Hall of the People. During the meeting, Calvin raised his hand and asked Zhou Enlai, What do you think of hippie? Zhou replied, we allow young people to explore and seek truth in different ways, which is a good thing. However, there's one point. It is always necessary to find a common ground for the majority of people, as this can enable the majority of humanity to achieve progress and happiness. 
At the meeting, the American delegation extended an invitation to the Chinese table tennis team to visit the U.S., which Zhou Enlai immediately accepted. Less than 10 hours after the meeting, U.S. President Nixon issued a statement announcing the lifting of a 21-year-old embargo against trade with China. Three months after the meeting, Harry Kinster secretly flew from Islamabad to Beijing via the Pakistan Channel to meet with Chinese leaders. Ten months after the meeting, U.S. President Nixon officially visited China, breaking the decades-long ice between the U.S. and China in one fell swoop. In 2024, after 45 years of the official establishment of diplomatic relations between the U.S. and China, amid tense political circumstances, the peoples of two countries are still playing table tennis together to maintain this hard-won friendship. Physically, Chinese athletes tend to be smaller compared with their Western counterparts, making contact sports less favorable. However, table tennis, a game that demands agility and quick reflexes, fits perfectly with the physical traits of the East Asians. China's consistent success in table tennis isn't just due to these physical advantages. The nation's dominance is rooted in rigorous training, advanced techniques, and comprehensive support systems. Many coaches in China are former world champions themselves, bringing a high level of expertise. Each key player receives personalized training methods tailored by these experienced coaches. Sports competitions are not just physical contests, but also psychological battles. In the Chinese national table tennis team, the psychological well-being of each athlete is giving significant attention and guidance. More importantly, in the information age, athletes also collaborate with research teams to analyze their own tactics as well as those of international opponents. This competitive spirit extends beyond international arenas to domestic grounds. Table tennis is one of the most popular sports in China, with a West Grassroots Foundation. Many schools offer table tennis as an elective course, continuously feeding talent into the national pool. Despite the popularity and support, the standards for professional table tennis players in China are extremely high. Very few make it to the national team, and even fewer reach the world podium. Selection begins at a young age, with years of training, competition, and elimination. The path to success is undoubtedly arduous. Jiao, you win the tournament, you feel like, hey, I want to win the tournament. But when you win the tournament, you feel like, can I win? I really don't have any faith. This path is just going to be a good feeling. No match is easily won, and no one can guarantee an internal dominance. Regardless of who leads the future of table tennis, this sport has undeniably brought hope, strength, and unity to the world, to China, and to everyone who loves it. As we look forward to the upcoming challenges and triumphs, let us remember that table tennis is more than just a game. It is a symbol of perseverance, friendship, and the indomitable spirit of humanity. The legacy of table tennis, etched with sweat and streams of countless players, will continue to inspire generations to come, uniting us all in the pursuit of excellence and harmony.